Why did God do it this way? Where he, gave, he, he comes and he interacts with a virgin and made it so that when Jesus lives his life and is conceived that it be done in this style with a virgin. Like there's a lot of answers that have been given throughout history. I disagree with most of them. So, so let me tell you the couple answers that I actually disagree with and I'll tell you what I think is going on here. One of the answers that's given is the reason God does it this way is because God is anti-sex. Right, he doesn't like sex, he only believes in sex for procreation, and that's why he does it this way. And so there's denominations that say, Mary was a virgin her whole life, right? She never did that dirty act, because that's dirty and that's wrong and that's not what God wants, but that's false. We know that, and some of you grew up in churches like that, and you've lived with a psychology of sexuality that's so negative that it's affected the way you function in the world. But when you read the Bible, we know that God is very pro-sex in the context of marriage. He's constantly encouraging people. This whole books of the Bible, Song of Solomon, is a whole book about the importance of the sexuality in the context of a marriage. First Corinthians chapter seven, encourage it. Over and over, God wants pleasure, procreation, protection in the context of sexuality. And we know that. And some of you have stayed away from Christianity because you thought that, be liberated from that. God wants this, actually wants to use sexuality to draw you to himself and enjoy and love and flourish in the context of your marriage. Now, here's... Here's the second uh, bad idea, I think, is that some people say, uh, God does it this way because Jesus had to be sinless. And if he had two parents, if he has a father, then he's gonna get the sinful nature transferred over to him. Now, I'm not saying I totally disagree with that, but I don't see the necessity of it because it assumes that the father is the one who translates the sinful nature over to the child. Now, I don't know, you know if the ladies just kind of smuggled this in somewhere in history, and I, but, but while we love the ladies, we don't love you that much that we think that you're sinless and somehow all the sinful nature that comes into your child comes from the dad. It would also put the woman in a spot where they, you know, start to resent us a little bit. Like every time the kid bites someone, you're, think of your kids. Every time they bite someone, every time they lie, it's like, nah, that stupid husband of mine gave this kid the sinful nature and now what are we going to do? The Bible doesn't say that. It says the sinful nature comes, doesn't say it comes through the father at all. It doesn't give any indication that it comes from either one. And secondly, if the Holy Spirit can overshadow and block her sinful nature, which we do believe she had, and, and, and she doesn't pass it on to Jesus, then the Holy Spirit could do the same thing in regard to Joseph. If Jesus had two parents, he could also block Joseph's sinful nature, and it doesn't get passed on to Jesus. He, he can block it all. So I don't think it's necessary. So what's the meaning of the virgin birth then? What's the point? So there's people who come in and they argue, okay, Mary's just like an incubator for Jesus. So Jesus maybe wouldn't, would he? Like people sit around and they debate this stuff. Like, would Jesus have looked like Mary? Does she pass her genes on to When people are walking around like, oh, you have Mary's nose and you have Mary's eyes. Is that what's going on? This is the stuff that keeps Bible college kids awake at night. So I don't think that's what's going on in this text. The text doesn't care about all this stuff. So what's the meaning? What's the point? I think there's a uniqueness of Jesus Christ that's being shown. He doesn't have a human father. He comes from the heavens. So, so that when people are talking about his uniqueness and saying, who is this? Why is he here? I don't understand how he's got these powers. It's because he's not natural. He, he's magic in a sense. He's, he's something else, right? 32 times in the gospel of John, he says, I came from heaven. That's really strange language if you think about it. Like, like no founder of any religion claims that about themselves. Muhammad did not claim that. Joseph Smith did not claim that. But Jesus comes and he claims, I'm actually from the heavens. 32 times in, in, in the Gospel of John alone. He says, I already existed. But then I came into the world. And then there's, of course, so there's the uniqueness. But then there's, of course, this beautiful point of God is saying to us something about salvation in coming in the context of a virgin. He's saying, I'm the one who had to bring salvation about because you couldn't. That's the point of the virgin birth. You tried so hard. You need a savior so bad, but you couldn't, you couldn't do it. So I had to do it for you. I had to save you from yourself.